Hey guys, it's Trista with Tried and True. So if you're a mom like me, you've got lots of questions about the beginning of the school year. Are they going back? Are they gonna be home learning? Um, are they gonna go back for a little while and then get shut down again? Like, how are we supposed to plan for all this, right? And how do we make sure that our kids have the right learning environment? I feel like everybody, you know, was just sort of hanging on till the end of the year when everything got shut down. And so we were all just kind of doing the best that we could just to get by, right? So now we're sort of in this back to school 2.0 and we've learned lots of lessons and it's time to get serious about the kids learning environment at home. So I got a friend of mine on a Zoom call and I thought I would share it with you. My friend, Laura Davis is with HPD Architects HPD, HPD Architects and Interiors, and she is so smart. Anyway, she's an expert in space planning, and so we had a great conversation about things to consider when you're maybe buying your kid a desk, or trying to find some space in your home, or, um, you know, how, how to make sense of the space that you have for all the personalities of the kids that you have, because Let's face it, some kids learn differently than others. So I thought I would share it with you. I thought it was a great way to sort of bring in all the concerns and the ideas. And so I hope you enjoy. Okay, hi. Hey. So have you seen the video of um, from the Holderness family? Mm -mm. No. So it's, it's all about... <clears throat> how nobody can make a decision about this and like she's oh. interviewing her FedEx man and then she's calling her friends and she's like well that's a good point oh that's a good point oh yeah we're gonna keep him home no that's a good point I probably should send him and I mean it was just you know like three minutes of exactly what we've all been dealing with yes and then <laughs> it so seems funny. to change as fast as Texas weather around here right as whether schools are going back or not going back or who's allowed to go back and it's just bananas. Yeah. yeah. So, it's, but the only thing for sure is that we are definitely starting the school year with three weeks, three weeks, if not more of virtual homeschool. Okay. So everybody a hundred percent in our whole district. Wow. So, so, which means, um, yeah, my kids can't try to do zoom calls on the floor anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the right. entire spring uh, looked like. And uh, in fact, I caught my my 11 year old doing, um, he had his, his iPad in front of him, the one that the school gave him to do his calls, and then right beyond the iPad. So it looked like he was looking at the iPad. Right beyond the iPad was his giant TV with the um, with his Fortnite game going on. And I'm like, dude, the least you could do is turn the volume down. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to know with explosions in the background. Yeah, it was hilarious. Funny and creative and horrifying all at the same time. I was like, yeah, I caught my kid a number of times. She, she wears her headphones. And so the teachers think that she's wearing her headphones for the oh, class. Yeah. yeah. When in fact, she has her iPad next to her playing Amazon Music. And she's, she's got them like not completely on her ear. She's got them just a little bit set back so she can listen to her music and the teacher. And the teacher. Yeah. I like Aaron it. might be part of the reason why we did not have a stellar yeah. <laughs> learn at home experience. No, I, yeah. I fully support her methods. Yeah. I, like it. I mean, I mean, I get it. I, lots of people <laughs> like to study with music. So, I, but anyway, right. So parents all over are faced with this, a lot of parents are faced with yes. this, okay, we're going to be home, home learning, synchronous learning, whatever we're going to, remote learning, yeah. whatever we're going to call it. Yeah. We're going to have to face for it. And even if you're going back to school, like we're probably, I mean, today, ask me in two hours if we're still going back. Right. But, yeah. Um, we're mm -hmm. going back. But there's a good chance that we could get shut down again. We, nobody knows. Oh, yeah. So 
I think we all need to be kind of prepared for it. And there's no better person than I know to ask about space planning than you. Oh, so. fantastic. <laughs> Yes. And I'm living it. So I, I must be the expert, right? I know. I can't think of anybody better to ask about how to prepare for back to school planning than um, an architect with a specialty in space planning who has two small boys at home. Yes. Who should be in the classroom. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, gets to be the teacher. So you're the resident expert. So how are you going to tackle back to school at home? Yes, yeah, so that has been a topic of conversation for weeks now, um, because like I mentioned, my oldest had didn't have a desk, didn't have any, um, and you know didn't have any place to specifically zone in his room or in the house as his study space, uh, because for better or worse, last year his. I don't know if it was just the fifth grade or if it was his whole school, but they basically said, unless you don't get something done during the day, we don't give homework. So you can, you can take stuff home if you don't get it done, but if you're getting your stuff done in class, we're good. You don't have to bring homework home. So he would come home and go play soccer or, you know, he didn't have a need for a dedicated desk and study sure. space. So uh, so that's what we're kind of running up against now is that, you know, in the spring, it was sort of like, let's just survive this. Let's, <laughs> like, Everyone was in survival mode. Oh, completely. Yeah. So we were, we would jump on for the 20 minute Zoom call and then the rest of the day was his, except for then maybe one more Zoom call in the afternoon, if he remembered, <laughs> you know, if we weren't out getting lunch at Chick-fil-A or something. Right. <laughs> so, so, but now he will be like they take attendance at 7.50 in the morning and he's got to be on his call as if he's sitting in his classroom. So, yeah. so I kind of decided pretty quickly, we need to get serious about this and find a place for him to, to for school time to call home in his room. Uh, and then same with my little one, my five-year-old will be starting kindergarten and they are going to be doing a similar approach, but he won't be on his screen the entire day. So it'll be more like check in, learn something with his classmates and then hop off the call. And then I have to be his education coach. So there we go. Let me update my LinkedIn profile because now I've got one more title. Uh, yeah. So then I'll be working with him and same thing. We have to have a place to do little projects and do his worksheets and whatever. So both of them, uh, they both have their own rooms and they're both packed right now because we live in a, a house that was built in the seventies and the bedrooms are not huge, but, uh, we, and you're usually yeah, so outside your house. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, I just need to get a couple sheds in the back yeah. and just give them, you know, put a, put a, you know, floor fan yeah. in there and solution. Yeah, it, don't worry, kids. In a month, it won't be so high. It's all right. good. Yeah. Come in if you get thirsty. Yeah. That, why did here's I think a, of that sooner? Portable air conditioner. Yeah. Let me know when you're hungry. Right, right. Yeah. Here's exactly. a mini fridge. Right. <laughs> don't come out until you're done. <laughs> the hose is right there. Turn it on on the outside of the house. Yeah. They'd be fine. Yeah. Lots of learning would happen oh, if we yeah. did it that way. I don't think so. Yeah, so I've, um, I've pulled out, you know, of course, being an architect in residential design, I, it didn't take long before I had to draw my own floor plan, because, you know, of course, my husband and I are always trying to figure out what's the next new home improvement thing we're going to do, right? Yeah, so we pulled out the floor plan, and, and I've got some of their furniture already drawn in the floor plan, like their bunk beds and, you know, bookshelves and things. So we're kind of like playing, it's almost like playing paper dolls. If you remember when you would kind of move, move around their little outfits and, and rearrange things. And that's basically what we do when we're space planning. So whether you have a piece of graph paper and you just measure out a rough shape of the room. And then, uh, in fact, when I was taking my interior design exams, they taught us to, because you had to space plan so quickly in the test, they taught us to use sticky notes and to just roughly cut them or tear them even into the general shape and size of the piece of furniture you're trying to place. And then literally you can move them around until you figure out what's the best layout. So there's high tech ways to approach it and low tech. And so we were playing around with it 
in the computer, but then also I would take the tape measure and go to each of their rooms and stand where I thought the desk might be. And what's important, especially because they're going to be on camera, I mean, essentially on these Zoom right. calls all the time, is it's actually pretty important to have the lighting right. Mm -hmm. You know, not only for, um, for him to have the right kind of lighting on his desktop so it's comfortable and not too glary, but also for his classmates and his teacher to be able to see him. Because I sat in on a couple of his calls last spring <laughs> and there one of his classmates had LED color changing lights in her room and that's all she had on. <laughs> So it kind of looked like a disco in there. Um, you That's know, not the it, word that came to mind for me, but okay. Yeah, I know, I'm trying <laughs> to keep it appropriate. But yeah, it was not the, not that, yeah, as the red light turned on, I was like, oh, Ooh, okay. Nice. Yeah, and it doesn't help that she's sitting on her bed while she does this call. Oh, you know, I mean, major fifth, fail. Gr fifth grade. Yeah, yeah, we're not, we're not doing that. Uh, anyway, so point being, um, it was very distracting. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> for for the other students on the call. Um, and it just literally did not put her in a good light. Let's just put it that way, pun intended. Um, so that's a big deal because if you're going to be interacting, your only way to gain reputation and gain kind of a relationship with your teacher is to be respectful visually right? Because that's sure. the only way she's interacting with you. And, you know, until you start turning in assignments or have phone calls, mm -hmm. you know, on other times. So, it, I mean, it works for professionals, but it also works for these students. I mean, we have to think about that, sure. that they're, if there's a lot of flashing and movement and stuff going on in their background, that's going to be distracting. Then it makes the teacher think that the kid's not paying attention. You know, if there's too much, mm -hmm. if it's distracting me to watch them, what must it be like in their home to, you know, try to be a student? Sure. So there's a lot that kind of goes into, I mean, I hate to say it, but your kid almost has to brand to themselves <laughs> on a Zoom call. I mean, I know you get this because of all the marketing, right? You're right. Yeah, um, I'm thinking desktop ring lights. I'm thinking right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like reflective shields. You know. Yeah. Let's um, get a Hollywood producer in here yeah, and get the I mean, lighting it's correct. It's not that hard. I mean, look, I've got. <laughs> yeah. See, there you go. But you have to find the right spot for it. I mean, in kids. I mean, some kids. I guess if they've got a YouTube channel, they're probably ahead of their adults. But um, we have to help them. Yeah, so there's a lot. I mean, you you don't have to go overboard, but just make a making a few adjustments. Like, if they're if there's a huge window behind them, just turn their desk around. Let them be sideways on the window or facing the window. It'll make all the difference. Get some natural light on their face. Sometimes you can fix it. Sometimes you can't. Like for example, right now I don't love where I'm recording. <laughs> This we're still a little bit in the emergency mode in my home, trying to figure out where everybody's going to work from home and not okay, drive each other I crazy. You, every time I talk to you, it's like you're in. Every time, it's like you're in a different room. It's like you're hiding from your family. Like I expect the next time that we join on a video call, you're literally going to be in your closet. I might. Yeah. That, okay. Maybe the acoustic challenge granted. There. I'm on. <laughs> Yeah, I know we, we talked about the acoustics, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's challenging because that's, you got to, anyway, maybe, maybe, it, maybe it's me just obsessing over Zoom backgrounds because I just think it's hilarious, all the different, you know, particularly the people on TV when they're, uh, you know, broadcasting from home and mm -hmm. they're, it's real interesting to see what they choose. So do they broadcast from their kitchen or are they in a staged corner of their living room or you know, it's kind of interesting. And I, and I think kids are aware of it. Like you said, YouTube has taught them that, you know, everybody can be on camera and for sure. for sure. And so here we are. So we've, yeah. So we've been talking a lot about space planning at our house. And uh, what's interesting is when I was growing up, my parents said, Hey, we'll do a built-in desk when we designed and built our home. Uh, when I was in high school, we, my sister and I were fortunate enough to get built-in desks in our room. And so there was some discussion on what sort of like how many drawers do we want and where might the computer go and that sort of thing. But now the kids are all, all their electronics is portable. So they've got 
basically you might have sort of a docking station if you have some okay. sort of laptop, but most of the time you're, they're probably mobile and maybe they, all they have is an iPad or something like that to interface with their, their friends and teacher. Um, so the desktop usability question becomes a little different because you have to talk about, well, if it's all virtual, are, do they even have textbooks? You know, is everything on their device? Versus when I was in school, we had, you know, a backpack full of books and a huge computer sitting on the counter, you know, on the desktop and a huge monitor that took up lots of space. So it's a different conversation than when we were kids, for sure. So you do have to, um, you have to make sure that the desktop is deep enough um, so that it accommodates. Because right now, for example, I've got my laptop in front of me, but I only have probably six inches in front of the laptop to the edge of the desk, and that's not comfortable to write on. So you want to sort of stage out the stuff that you anticipate having on your desktop and also take into account whether your kid is right-handed or left-handed. And I've got two lefties in my house and I'm a righty. In fact, my husband's a lefty too. So it's three against one. I'm the only righty in the house. So I have to retrain my brain and have sometimes even have them come sit down and say, okay, show me where it's most comfortable for you. Which side would you have reference material or your iPad or a book or, you know, a notepad if you have to take notes or do work on an assignment with your teacher. So so what should they look for in a desk? Do you think that like a hutch version is preferred? I mean, I know that's a lot of visual space up above, but um, what are your feelings on hutches? I mean, it adds storage for sure. It does for sure. Yeah, in fact, my son, I showed him a ton of different desks. In fact, we went to Ikea and he saw one of the desks there with a hutch and he loved it. Um, okay. he, has lot, he has lots of collections. So I think he's, you know, I'm thinking, oh good, a place for books. And he's thinking, oh good, a place for my NASCARs. <laughs> and so that's slightly different goals. Uh, but he's like, oh yeah, I want all those shelves. And so but Then they if, can't put their desk against a window. Exactly. And that's part of the problem is where we had originally thought about putting the desk part of it was going to be in front of the window and it's the only window in his room. And so I really don't want to block, right. you know, 50% of the light coming in. So that would be a problem if, if he really, really wants a desk with a hutch where he can kind of surround himself with all his mm -hmm. favorite things, then we have to flip flop to the other side of the room and basically uh, take apart a huge uh, Ikea shelf unit, you know, one of those big, huge, um, I think they call them calyx now, but they were expedite when I was, when we first got it. So anyway, the, you know, the big square bookshelf thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's something to think about is, is it going to be just a, literally a surface with a couple drawers or maybe even just room for baskets on shelves? Or are you getting something a little more substantial with either bookshelves on the wall behind it or uh, some kind of, you know, storage hutch? above what are you feeling on those ones where the, like the bed is up above like basically you create a bunk bed and the underneath is your desk area you know we looked into those so the lofts um, there's quite a few that are they're a great way to double your space in the same footprint so where his bed is now we thought about doing a loft to be able to get the bed up and put the desk underneath a um, couple of things that we thought about is if I'm going to change the sheets on that bed, <laughs> I, the one we looked at at Ikea, I couldn't even see the mattress because there was a solid panel across the whole side of the bed, obviously, so we can't roll out. So that was, you know, thank you, safety uh -oh. people. Right. But um, I was like, and yeah, like there's no way I'm climbing up that ladder to, to get up there. So think about logistically, how is that going to work? And then you know, he doesn't get sick very often, but when you're sick, you don't feel good. And, and if he has to get down and, you know, go to the bathroom or something, then I don't want that to become a problem. So I kind of, we sort of nixed the loft idea pretty quickly. 
The other thing too is he's still at the age where a lot of times we'll sit together and do assignments together. And if I have to be ducking down under that <laughs> loft every time I want to sit with him at the desk or, or just kind of step in and, you know, kind of look over his shoulder, mm -hmm. that's going to get old real quick. So yeah, there's um, not much space there. So right. If, if we were just like to put a couch underneath and it was just going to be like a, a hangout or a place for gaming right. or whatever, that might be different. Um, but yeah, we, we looked at him, but I think he would outgrow it so quickly because it's just a twin size bed. You have to have a lot of real estate available in the room if you're going to do a big, uh, like a full size loft. They have some that, you know, where they've got a twin on top, but a full size below. Um, so you can get, a, you know, double two beds. Um, yeah, there's lots of different options if you've got the room for them and if it fits your kids, you know, personality. So um, for my little one, he wants a, uh, a desk that goes in a corner. So it has sort of that L shape. And so that brings up a whole nother space planning issue because he's only got one corner it can go in uh, that's not already occupied by a bed or the closet or the door to get in the room. There's only one corner. So I had to look at that also again, where's the window? Where's the light? What's it, what do we have to dismantle to get out of there in order to fit this thing in? So, um, so let's, let's rewind to, okay, so now moms are like, ah, uh, we got to fit more furniture into this room or we need to yeah. re, re um, organize it. My 12 year old, she has a desk in there, but she's 12. So she wants to change around all the furniture. And before we move this massive mm -hmm. bed that weighs, I don't know why it weighs so much. Um, we need to know that it's going to fit, right? So let's, let's revisit the whole, you can use graph paper kind of as your guide. Do you assume that each square in the graph is one foot or how do you do that? Um, well, a lot of graph paper is usually quarter inch graph paper. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if you're just drawing one room, you could probably do every square is six inches so that you could, okay. you know, two squares for every foot. Okay. And most rooms are not bigger than about 12 14 feet at the most, you know, a lot are more like in the 10, 11, 12 range for a, for, a, you know, standard bedroom. And so that would get you a decent drawing. It would end up being half inch equals a foot in, you know, if you're talking about architect scales and that's a perfectly good scale to, to test out space planning, to be able to, to deal with furniture. What are some mistakes that people make when they're trying to move their Lego board around with the, <laughs> with the graph uh, paper and the post notes. Yeah, so what you have to think about are where, you have to remember there are door swings. So in fact, we were gonna put his, his desk basically as close to the closet as we could, but he's got, he's got double doors that, that open out into the room. So I had to essentially open the door before I started measuring from the door to wherever we wanted to go. So that's a big deal is make sure you can still open things and get to what you need to get to. Um, the other thing is uh, don't forget about the chair because if you've got a kid that likes to kind of tuck their feet up under them and sit, you know, kind of Indian style in the chair or wants a chair that's a big upholstered chair so they can kind of sit and read in it that's a bigger piece of furniture so you need to make sure that you've got plenty of room around it not just for it to sit at the desk which is from the desk edge you know i would give it at least two feet maybe three feet behind you make sure that's clear and not going to cause problems um, and then things like you have you can't just measure from the wall surface and then and start planning the say the depth of a bed or a dresser or something because nothing is ever tight against a wall so always remember to add a good two or three inches on either side of every piece of furniture because you have you can always slide it in and get it tighter if you really have to but for planning purposes i would always give yourself a few inches of wiggle room 
because you have to be able to, I mean, literally you have to be able to hold the thing and slide it in and you got to leave room for your knuckles. Or I promise you, I speak from experience, you're not going to be happy. You, there's not enough band-aids in the world. So uh, yeah, so planning with a little wiggle room helps and makes it so that you don't get it in there so tight that then it won't work. Um, and then the other thing to look at is where are your electrical outlets and, um, and where's your lighting? Of course, desks, you can always do a task light uh, or you know, desk lamp or something, so that's pretty easy. But if you live in an older home and maybe there's only a couple outlets in the whole room, think about where are those cords gonna have to run? Are you gonna have to use a power strip you know, those sorts of things where, how is that going to work? Just keep, you know, put that on your checklist. Um, so what about, what if you have multi kids in one room and they have to share a desk? Well, that could be an option. If you've got kids who don't mind sharing a room, like for example, if you've got two kids that are separate right now, but you're looking to build in a study space, it may make sense to get them bunk beds or get put two beds in one room and make the other bedroom their study space slash playroom if you think that they are okay to study together. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you've got two kids in the same room and you don't have that extra space, then you still need to make accommodations for them each to have their own desk of some sort. And whether that's a lap desk that they can sit on their bed and, and prop their device upon. I mean, if that's all the room you've got, that's what you've got. Uh, but don't assume that they will share one desk. Make sure that they have their own space. That's a good tip. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so what about um, maybe moms who have multiple kids and multiple check-in times for the grades and they're gonna have all, all the kids at home. So, they probably have like a hub, right? It might be a kitchen or, you know, a dining room or something. Is there, do you have any tips on how to maybe temporarily rearrange a dining room to accommodate, you know, school? <laughs> yeah, you may have to. And actually with the way that school's gonna happen now, um, with everybody getting on a call, you may have to find space for each of them in a different room because that with the sound, even if they've got headphones on, they're going to have to be talking maybe to their teacher. And that's going to get super annoying if somebody else is in the room with them at the same time, um, which case in point is why I'm where I am because <laughs> my husband's on conference calls all the time and he's out in our dining room. Uh, or what was our dining room and is now our office. Uh, so one way to, to look for those spaces that maybe might double as a temporary desk um, would be to look for places where you can get some sound separation. So it might be that you have to put a little desk in the corner of your master bedroom so that one of the kids can do their schoolwork there during the day when, when you're not gonna be in there all the time. Um, but it gives them a quiet place so that they can concentrate and do their call. Or you might find a little area. I mean, honestly, it can squeeze in anywhere. We've got a little built-in desk in our limit. family room. Yeah, <laughs> in the guest bathroom, you know. I mean, I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. No, I mean, you There's really. Good in there. I don't know. <laughs> of course. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, you really, you can get creative and even, I'm hoping when the weather gets nice that maybe we can even sit outside if it's not, you know, Texas, it's pretty humid until like October, November, but, um, you know, and it's okay to switch it up, you know, try different places out. If you've got one kid that has to have noise canceling headphones on and you have to face them to a wall because any visual distraction just totally derails them. I mean, you know your kid better than anybody. So, don't be afraid to, I think, don't be afraid to customize your solution to each kid. And I know I fall into this problem all the time where I'm like, well, I want to keep everything equal so they don't fight about it. So I'm just going to get the exact same desk for my five-year-old as I am for my 11-year-old. And then I got to roll it back and go, hold on a second. They don't have the same needs. They're not the same size kid. They don't, you know, they don't, 
process and learn in the same way. So why would I force them to sit in the same way to learn what they need to learn? So you have to kind of, you know, look at each kid and see what's going to make them successful. So if, it, if you've got a real social kid that does well, you know, they're, they're going to be the ones that are studying in Starbucks, you know, someday when we can all go hang out in a Starbucks right. again. Um, they may do better having kind of that, that buzzing energy around them and maybe the kitchen table is the best place for them. Um, so, right. so give yourself a little bit of grace and a little bit of space to customize. And then see if it works. Give it a week or two and watch your kid and see, are they frustrated? Are they tired? Are they, is it too much of a struggle? And then check, check right? Check yes. <laughs> yeah. Are they crying in between classes? Uh, you know, and then, and then fix it. Maybe, maybe they're, they need sunshine. Maybe they spent the entire summer playing outside. Now all of a sudden they're stuck inside in a dark corner and it's just killing them, you know? So go stick them by, a window where they've got, you know, they, they can see the greenery and they can see some sunshine. And sometimes that's all it takes to, you know, to just change your environment. Sounds like we're going to need to put a list together of like back to school essentials with noise canceling <laughs> headphones, lap desks, ring lights, um, right. maybe yes. a portable table. Like if you're going to convert your, um, guest room or something and you mm -hmm. need some space you could get one of those folding tables and stick it in there for yeah. fourth grade i mean i don't know yeah yeah exactly no fourth and i've even in this room fifth grade's in this room yeah i've even seen those uh you know the the standing desks are a big thing right now yeah. and they have portable ones um or ones that you can just set on top of any table or oh, top okay. countertop and it will move up and down and adjust so you can go from sitting to standing and i know there's a lot of kids that like the fidget desk is uh -huh. is a solution now for a lot of kids who have to move the wiggle, chairs. And, the wiggle and or the, put them on like an exercise ball or give them something to kind of tip tock their feet back and forth you know on the floor so sometimes maybe even being able to stand and giving them just like a bar stool type, you know, a higher chair that they can just kind of perch on, mm -hmm. that might make a big difference. You know, don't feel like, oh, this is school, quote unquote, so they have to be at a school desk. You know, like, let's try to make it as much like their classroom as possible so that they don't feel like it's different. Well, it is different. <laughs> so let's look at this in the opposite way as an opportunity to customize their environment to be the best learning space to fit them. I mean, I think that's a huge opportunity to, I mean, we may go, holy smokes, my kid's doing better at home studying virtually than they ever have. Like, this is amazing. You know, we might discover that this is exactly what our kids need versus all of us are kind of dreading <laughs> the uh, having them at home and not knowing what to do with them. Um, yeah. hopefully we'll be all pleasantly surprised. All good tips. <laughs> good luck to us all. <laughs> yes. Good luck to <laughs> us all. Great. Um, okay. So one last question I wrote down here, what, oh, underneath the desk. So a lot of chairs you want to have rolling. What, how do you protect the carpet? What's or if they don't have carpet, maybe the hardwoods, what do you recommend for under the desk in terms of noise and mm -hmm. floor protection and cleanup? Yeah, because especially the little one, I was looking at, at his uh, school supply list and it was like glue sticks and scissors and markers glitter. and crayon. <laughs> yeah, everything short of glitter and thought, oh, okie dokie, we're going to be changing our vacuum schedule for sure because... Uh -huh. Ooh, this is gonna, yeah. I need to have the custodian come in each night, just like you know they do at school. That would be really handy. I'll right. have to look into that. Um, yeah. So flooring is a big deal, and and we're already dealing with it here because most of our rooms have carpet, and the rolling chairs are just brutal on carpet. You'll you'll start wearing holes in your carpet, and you're not going to be happy. So um, any office supply place is going to have one of those plastic hard plastic sheets that you can set on the carpet and that will allow a rolling chair to roll 
Mm -hmm. So that's helpful. If you have wood floors, you may even want to look into something like that um, for under a desk, even if you have wood floors, because what I've noticed in our dining room where we do have wood floors, we've had a rolling chair in there for a couple of years. And I can notice that the texture of the wood is slightly different under yeah. the desk where we've been rolling. It's changing, right. you know, kind of the grain. So uh, if you're sensitive to that, keep that in mind. And you may want to do, you know, again, talk to your kid. What are they, somebody that's, their feet are always freezing and they would do better, right? I know, me too. Well, in older homes, the vents are on the ground. Yeah, or sometimes if you don't have good insulation, the floors can be freezing. Yeah. So it just depends. Yeah, look at what your house is and how your, um, your student generally is more comfortable. Do they like to have socks on but no shoes? Are they barefoot all the time? Because it may be that if you've got a kid that is really stimulated by sensory stuff that maybe one of those um, kind of bare skin fuzzy rugs would be really nice under the desk, not under the chair necessarily, but just where their feet will hang out. Right. Um, so it's kind of like that toes in the sand, you know, toes in the grass kind of thing where you can kind of feel it and that gives you something to, to comfort you by. Um, versus like at our office, I've got one of those uh, ergonomic uh, rolling platforms. It's just a platform and it kind of rolls up and rolls back and I can just kind of move my feet on it and it relieves the pressure on my back. That's huge. I'm missing that right now because I don't have one at home. And I thought, well, if we still had phone books, I might be able to get a few phone books, but I don't even know where the phone books are anymore. Uh, so that, that can be an option if you, um, you know, if you're somebody that needs to have, you know, have your feet on something or likes to be kind of propped up, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, and then the other thing, if you've got hardwood floors or tile or something like that, where like my little one, when, when he gets into the rolling chair, he always, he hops up and then he ends up halfway across the room because <laughs> his feet are too short. He can't touch the oh, floor. Right, right. And so then he's like grabbing the, the chair, you know, the table edge and pulling himself Mm -hmm. back to the table and it's he's uncomfortable because he can't ever stay where he wants to stay yeah exactly <laughs> so for him it might make sense you know if that was his only study space option mm -hmm. it would make sense to put maybe get a piece of inexpensive indoor outdoor carpet or uh, like a low pile um, like a loop berber type carpet that has a little bit of texture but it's mm -hmm. still hard and flat so the so the wheels will roll but once you get where you want to be, you're not going to move. You know, that sort of thing gives it enough friction to keep you there, but not enough to make dents in the carpet. So um, I, th I think, think you'd need some um, carpet pad under that so it wouldn't slide around. Possibly. Yeah, either that, yeah, or that, that slightly padded, um, the, the underlayment for a rug, like an area rug, the, that might be perfect because then it would sort of keep everything in place. Um, yeah, so just look at whatever your flooring is. And, um, and then see what's going to be best. Because you may choose, you know, if you just are using a chair you already have and it's not on wheels, then you might be fine. If it's just a kitchen chair or, uh, you know, a desk chair without wheels, then it's okay. Um, but just, yeah, watch your floor for damage if you've not had that type of chair in that location before. Good tips. Yeah. <laughs> well, you said it best. <sighs> May God help us all. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There's a lot to think about then. And yeah, and then, oh, by the way, you got to get your kid through the school year. So, right. uh, you know, and don't forget the hand sanitizer and don't forget the... Oh, right. You know, yeah. Yeah. Sanitize your work surface and all that good stuff. I did hear a tip. I know it's not um, desk related, but yeah. if you wanted to put it on your desk, somebody... One of my friends converted one of those um, hand soap dispensers uh -huh. to put hand sanitizer in, in her house. Like what kind of dispenser? You know, like the, the ones that you just, they're refillable and oh, okay. they're like motion activator or whatever. Oh, so when yeah, you stick yeah, your yeah. hand under it, it gives you the soap. <gasps> she just converted it and put um, a hand, hand gel, yeah. hand sanitizer oh, gel. Oh, perfect. 
Oh, you could use that all over the house. Yes, and it would yeah. encourage little hands to be. Yes. I mean, oh, if it wasn't too idea. big, I would say I'm going to get one for my girl's locker when she goes back to school. Oh, because yeah. Because that, she'd be much more likely to just teach you know, and go yeah. instead of here, I have to open the cap or, you know, right. gotta, Find it in she's got to pump it, then it's going to go flying in her, you know, and <laughs> right. it would just, it would, it would save time, you know, when they're trying to change classes and everything, when actual time counts. Um, yeah, absolutely. If, not be if they, hopefully the they'll let them use their lockers again. Who knows? <laughs> We're having to redesign everything in our lives right now. So yes, home lockers is is for another episode. <laughs> right, exactly. And then we'll have to do another episode on pantries and bulk storage and all that good stuff because that's a whole nother thing that's I'm here be changing. For it. Yeah. Well, and in fact, I went to Target yesterday and um, I was able to download their the boys' school supply list and we started you know, picking out a few things just so we could start planning, you know, these desk areas. I don't know, right. what am I going to have to store in these drawers? And do I need dividers and separators and all baskets and whatever? So even that kind of stuff, you need to know what kind of equipment they're going to be using in order mm -hmm. to then know what, what kind of storage space you need. So that was eye-opening because I thought, oh yeah, I, we got a lot more to deal with. And they are asking the little ones to have 12 by 18 sheets of paper, like the big construction papers and the big manila, almost like poster size paper. And I'm like, I don't think I have a drawer big enough for that. So we're yeah, gonna that's have to- Yeah, that's bathroom storage conversation. Right, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna have to figure that out because I don't have a spot where that's not all just gonna get ruined. Yeah. At this point. Oh, wow. Yeah, so take inventory on what you're going to have to store before you go and buy a bunch of furniture. Probably the most important tip of the day. <laughs> That's important for anything. If you're going to redo a closet, no, if you're going to redo your pantry. Do just, just go do it and figure it out start, later. Just start yeah. buying fun things and just yes. go do if it's it. cute, buy it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but figure keep it out the later. receipt. Keep the receipt. Okay, yeah. You're my voice of reason. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, dear. Those are great. Thank you. Friends.